Hi guys, welcome to Crowns and Colibri Squad. I hope you guys are doing well. Okay, so today we have with us Shalini Mangal. Welcome Shalini to Crowns and Colibri Squad. Hi. Hi. Uh, Shalini, can you give a bit introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure. I am Shalini from Chennai. I am 40 years old. Uh, I am an IT professional and I am also a mother. So I was diagnosed uh, with Crohn's in 2012. So okay. that's even I have Crohn's also okay. for like seven years. So Shalini, uh, please tell us your early symptoms that uh, you traveled uh, during your diagnosis. Means before your diagnosis with Crohn's, what were your symptoms? Okay. So actually, I was diagnosed with Crohn's only in 2012. But my uh, initial symptoms started way back in 2009 itself, just three weeks after my delivery. So uh, my initial symptoms were uh, um, ulcers, mouth ulcers, and uh, I had uh, redness in my nose and my eyes were also inflamed and uh, also with uh, fever and uh, diarrhea. So I uh, consulted a doctor, a general physician, and uh, seeing my lean frame, he thought uh, he suspected of TB. And uh, he took all the relevant tests. Everything came out uh, negative. And uh, I was just uh, on IV with the anti-diarrheal and uh, antibiotics. I was discharged after a week. So after that, a couple of months, I didn't have any uh, health issues. Then I think in early uh, 2010, uh, my uh, symptoms uh, resurfaced. So this time I didn't have uh, fever or loose tools, but uh, I, my appetite became very poor. And uh, also I was uh, bloated and uh, nauseated all the time. So what we did was uh, we thought, okay, allopathy is not working out. Uh, let's consult a Siddha doctor. And uh, we went uh, to a Siddha doctor and I told all the symptoms. Actually, uh, for each symptom, he gave me a tablet and uh, the course was for six months. So I took the course for six months. Uh, there was improvement. I was able to eat well and all that. There was improvement and I thought, okay, everything is fine now. And uh, in 2010, uh, uh, mid-2010, I had to rejoin work as well. I was on maternity leave. Uh, so I had to rejoin work. I joined work. And after that, uh, I felt uh, uh, like totally exhausted. And it was too overwhelming for me taking care of uh, household chores with a newborn and office work. I, uh, physically, it was so draining uh, for me. But uh, I thought like maybe because of the change in sleep patterns, with the newborn and so much of work that I am taking now, maybe uh, because of that. And I just kept going. I didn't uh, consult anyone. I didn't listen to my body also, even though it needed rest. I just kept going. And uh, in early uh, 2011, uh, the frequency of my bathroom visits started increasing. And I had severe mouth ulcers uh, this time. I was not able to eat anything. Then uh, we went to uh, Coimbatore, my mother-in-law's place, and uh, we went to a uh, gastro doctor in 2011. And uh, uh, he uh, first did an abdominal scan, and uh, he identified that there are issues in my large intestine. And uh, uh, I had a colonoscopy, endoscopy, and all that. Uh, colonoscopy, it was very tough because he was, the scope was not possible after 20 centimeter. I had strictures. So the scope itself was not possible. And uh, after, uh, but somehow he did that. And uh, after a few days, he diagnosed a disease as ulcerative colitis. So, and he gave me medicines, but uh, the thing is, he didn't give much insight about the disease. And uh, even I didn't have much idea. Uh, about I googled but I didn't get the seriousness of the disease and uh, after having the tablets my mouth ulcers became so severe and uh, my abdominal pain also started by the time so we thought that the salopathy medicines uh, the, because of the heat generated I'm getting all these issues so again 
I did a big mistake by switching to homeopathy. I stopped the allopathy abruptly and we consulted a homeopathy doctor. And uh, in homeopathy also, uh, initially the symptoms uh, uh, the improved and uh, I thought, okay, fine, this is going to be, give me relief. And in the meantime, I had sent my colonoscopy reports to my uh, uh, company and uh, requested for uh, more leave. Actually, uh, they said like by 2011, December, I need to uh, rejoin. So I was heavily relying on this uh, homeopathy treatment that uh, things would work out, but uh, it was a complete uh, disaster. So I had to, I was spending more time in the bathroom and my abdominal pain also was uh, um, unbearable. And uh, in that situation, I was not able to, uh, I couldn't rejoin work. And uh, so the company also, they asked me to uh, put down the papers because they've already given me one year of maternity leave and again six months. So they were not in a position uh, to give me more leave. So I had to put down my papers. So that was a big blow for me because... Uh, Already my health was at stake and uh, 12 years of uh, career, I started my career in 2000 and uh, without break, I was uh, going for work and this big blow I didn't expect actually. So this added more stress to me and uh, I had to be admitted on an emergency in a reputed hospital in Chennai. So there only after doing so many tests, uh, they diagnosed the disease as Crohn's. So 2012 only, it was officially diagnosed. So before your diagnosis, I just want to ask one small question. Like as you said, you were going for bath surgery, you had stricture. So yes. did you like did you face constipation or diarrhea was only there because of the stricture also? No, no, no. It was uh, diarrhea. Uh, my uh, every day I would uh, pass like five to six times of. Uh, loose tools. So it was all diarrhea, no constipation at all. And in that way, you are able to go for work also? No, no, no. My uh, loose tools started in 2011 only. Okay. And uh, the frequency was less. The initially, it was like uh, three times. Then gradually, it increased. And after the homeopathy treatment, it increased more. The frequency was more. So that time I realized like in this condition, I cannot rejoin work and my abdominal pain also was under. Initially, I didn't have any abdominal pain. After the colonoscopy, after the, in 2011, only my abdominal pain started. I just can say only one word, you're really a strong girl. Really strong. Yeah, Crohn's made me strong. That's what I can say. I think... Crohn's, not Crohn's, you are strong. Not because of Crohn's, but you are strong. I realize that I am strong after yeah. the diagnosis. <laughs> okay, so let's carry on with our thing. So like uh, before exactly surgery, the, what is the exact uh, treatment you received? Yeah, actually, in uh, I mentioned, right, uh, in Feb 2012, I was diagnosed uh, with Crohn's. And uh, actually, even though uh, they diagnosed, I had a very bitter experience and at the hospital. Actually, I don't know whether that is the actual process for the diagnosis. I was uh, admitted for close to two months. Feb and March 2012, I was in the hospital. I was like 43 kgs when I got admitted. And in that two months, I lost more than 10 kgs of weight. And uh, even to walk or to get up from bed, I needed someone's help. So it was that horrible. And uh, the thing was, I, I couldn't even uh, drink or eat anything. So I was deprived of food and I was only on IV and TPN also. Most of the days, I'll be on TPN and uh, IV. And uh, all the tests, uh, in the two months, they took more than... 60 or 70 blood samples and everything two ct scans twice colonoscopy and uh, abdominal scans and uh, mri everything was taken so every day or the other there will be some tests and i totally lost hope i 
initially thought maybe they are experimenting uh, with me it was uh, that horrible and i was also missing my daughter uh, very badly i actually totally succumbed to the disease i thought i and i have never heard of this disease and those days there was no smartphone right in 2011 and also i couldn't google also i was just in the hospital i didn't even know what day, what part of the day it was it was like that for two days and uh, everything uh, my husband and my sister were taking turns in helping me that pan like i couldn't even get up from bed just to lift also i needed uh, someone support so it was that horrible i completely i was a totally disregardful of my appearance i don't even take bath i was i gave up that was the condition i didn't know that time that prons is manageable i thought okay some mysterious disease i have got and it is not curable so i gave up and after that after two months i was discharged and uh, in april uh, i came home and i have put a full time cap taker to, to go to the bathroom also i needed uh, someone it was that horrible i was just like 30 or 32 kg of bones that's all and uh, it was that horrible and uh, after that after coming home i started having food and all that and uh, i started having more of non veg actually i was not a regular eater but those days uh, i couldn't find any indian diet when i googled also everything was more of meat and the fish fish also tuna salmon so actually yes, there is not available much in india searching for that kind of seafoods and i was fully eating seafoods i thought okay only if i eat that all these things my prawns will be curable and i was eating all that just to gain weight but what happened was just one month i was at home and after that and that time also my stomach pain was there even though i was on tablets and all that my stomach pain loose stools everything continued but the only thing was uh, um, after two or three weeks i was able to walk i i can manage my own duties that much improvement the basic was, movement for human you could yeah, do yeah i can manage i can go to my uh, go to the bathroom on my without the weight yes yeah so that three weeks there was slight improvement but the, the stomach pain all that was still there and after uh, after four weeks or so in may month uh, i had my abdominal pain aggravated and i also had severe uh, back pain and uh, i couldn't even walk straight it was uh, unbearable and again we went to that uh, chennai hospital and uh, they did a ct scan again and uh, they said like uh, the bowel has distended uh so it might result in a, a life threatening uh, situation and they asked me asked us to go to cmc hospital in velu uh so uh, they said there are specialist over there who can treat this type of condition so uh, they asked me to go to cmc velu and uh, we went there so initially i was admitted in gastro uh, department and uh, the doctors my husband accompanied me and uh, we i uh, got admitted they said uh three weeks we'll see if we can manage conservatively and uh, if that doesn't work out then uh, surgery will be the last option so three weeks uh, i was there and uh, and one more thing was since i didn't eat much for the past three four months uh, my hb uh, was like six my albumin was just 0.5 so they said even for surgery you are not fit because with such a low albumin that is the main parameter for healing uh, surgery might also be the right option so so i was like i they cannot and if they manage conservatively for more than 3 weeks and if my intestine ruptures that might be life threatening so i was in the middle of it with neither surgery nor conservative treatment so it was a very tricky situation even for the doctors but one change that happened over me was i started accepting the disease only in cmc because the doctors the way they spoke to me about the illness and they actually previously every time the doctors didn't talk to me they only talk to my attendants so i thought i always feel that they are saying something uh, yeah, something risky which i don't know 
uh, and uh, my attendees maybe they are hiding from me uh, but yeah. this time the doctors they spoke to me directly and i started uh, getting to know the disease and uh, every day i look forward for the doctors visit i i got a tab that time with the data card so i'll google and find out what is my disease all about and uh, i will prepare questions and ask i every day i look forward even though my stomach pain was there everything was there there was a complete transformation in me i i accepted the disease that was a major change i accepted the disease and i uh, i was uh, cooperating i started cooperating i think till that i was not doing that i was not ready to accept the disease and from my end i didn't put any efforts before the surgeries in the three weeks that you were there were you not given any kind of steroids or anything i was on steroids. i was on steroids even in chennai hospital also i was on steroids okay i did, did that reduce your mouth ulcer and were you able to eat food that point yeah 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 mouth ulcers were were reduced a bit and as i told you like uh, when i was discharged from the hospital i couldn't even move but but after coming home i was able to eat food uh, everything my uh, mouth ulcers uh, were subsided but uh, my stomach pain was there uh, and stomach pain and loose stools continued but mouth ulcers were okay I was able to eat but not fully i would uh, divide my meal into many parts like six times a day i was having food a uh, bland food and uh, mostly as i told you it was mostly meat only uh, fish and all that i used to eat and uh, Uh, three weeks after that three weeks uh, they were uh, not nothing worked out in a three weeks so doctors decided that uh, we have to go for uh, surgery only so with that low parameter so the one said iv one said uh, so many albumin bottles with everything and my hb was also uh, very low and uh, blood transfusion also happened and uh, june i had my ileostrom how was the recovery process in cmc it was too good actually as i mentioned i accepted the disease and when he briefed about the ileostomy initially i was scared uh, because uh, when he uh, spoke about stoma and all that i was scared but he said it can be reversed and uh, most importantly he told that uh, you will uh, the quality of life will be good and you will be able to eat in whatever you want you will be able to eat so for me that was a key takeaway because uh, it's been like uh, more than 6 to 8 months or more than that since i had good food so i was looking forward uh, to have food that was a may- key takeaway for me and i was looking forward for the surgery because uh, all these years i've suffered at least this uh, surgery will be the last resort that's what i that's what in my mind that time so i was ready for the surgery and uh, took uh, my husband uh, was only person in cmc he was my uh, only attender and uh, he was there with me and the surgery took like 4 uh, to 5 hours and uh, initially uh, the when they say ball distended was only in my ascending colon but uh, during when they it was an open abdominal surgery when they opened it they discovered that there are pseudo polyps in my transverse colon and as well as uh, in uh, my descending colon not fully but uh, somewhere in my descending colon also so they had to remove my ascending transverse and part of my uh, descending colon so that was uh, the ileostomy and the recovery process was uh, very quick the very next day they asked me to walk and uh, yeah the very next day and i walked a uh, few steps the very next day with the ileostomy and i did and after that it was very easy for me the recovery i was discharged within a week and i learned how to put that stoma bag and all that i learned and uh, after that i went to my mother in law's place in uh, coimbatore so my husband was here so i only uh, putting on the stoma bag dressing everything uh, there is no other option so i had to do everything on my own and uh, i gained weight also and uh, within 2 uh, 3 months i was ready for the reversal 
so the reversal happened in september how has your life been after the surgery how so, did you, how much did it improve my uh, life after surgery was too good i was able to have food uh, whatever food i i was missing that part very badly in my life so i was able to eat and eating is not a big thing and after that the after effects of having food was not there uh, the ileostomy initially i had some issues with the ileostomy it was leaking too much then by trial and error i identified like these foods i can eat uh, i uh, didn't eat much of non veg after that veg i was completely okay so i was so i was devouring food and i was able to do my activities i helped my mother in law and the, all the household chores and it was a very smooth recovery process that's what i could say i uh, slept i took rest actually my uh, parents took care of my daughter because if she is with me i won't be able to take proper rest she was like just 2 years so yes. she did not allow me to take rest but i i was missing her but this recovery should be smooth that was the only thing in my mind so uh, i uh, put all the efforts to make the recovery uh, smoother that's what i can say and the reversal happened in uh, september just uh, my first ileostomy was in uh, june and september i had my uh, reversal and how has this journey from before surgery to after surgery affected your mental health mental health actually yes yeah it definitely affected my mental health but what i could say is after surgery there is not much impact because i understood this is what is going to be my life and this is my disease and this is how i am going to manage so after surgery uh, i didn't have much of mental uh, health issues but when i was not ready to accept the disease then when i was like fighting with the unknown uh, those times definitely uh, my uh, mental health was also impacted and uh, when i was dependent on others for each and every need those were the days when i had severe uh, mental issues but uh, after that once i accepted and once uh, after the surgery when my quality of life improved i didn't have uh, much issues as you can uh, as you said all this so uh, your family supported you a lot right in your uh, journey yeah right uh, especially my husband and my mother in law they were like very instrumental in my uh, recovery process because uh, uh, my parents uh, took care of my daughter in chennai and after each surgery i used to go to coimbatore in my mother in law's place and she was always there when needed and she used to cook six times a day for me and uh, i cannot express in words and she made my recovery very easier and uh, my husband he also took long leave he was the only attendant for me uh, in cmc throughout all the surgeries so he handled everything effortlessly and uh, single handedly because he has to coordinate with the doctors arrange blood make the payments there are so many things right so everything uh, he handled uh, effortlessly so uh, without uh, his support i wouldn't have come this far so uh, family support is really needed but what i felt over the years was even though we have a support system uh, we need, we should not uh, we should count on us more because uh, uh, we need to be independent that only is going to boost our confidence uh, if we fully depend on others for everything then our confidence will become low we can have a support system we can depend on whenever needed but uh, we need to count on us more yes means once we start accepting ourselves no matter how much whether we have support or not that is that becomes a secondary option but the primary option is to accept yourself at any cost yes yeah, that uh, is yes yes, yes. so shalini uh, i want to know like as you said about the reversal surgery can you just tell me uh, what is reversal surgery and uh, what were the complications that you faced after your surgery 
reversal surgery in the sense like uh, my small intestine was outside right in uh, in the stoma so they just kept it inside and closed that part so the main compl i didn't have any complication after the reversal uh, but the only thing was the wound was very deep uh, because uh, the stoma uh, site right so the wound was very deep and uh, one or two days i it was very uh, every day will change the dressing right it was uh, a deep wound so it hurted a lot but one or two days i let the uh, doctors do the dressing but after that i started uh, doing the dressing every day we need to uh, change the bandage and all that and even after discharge i think for 10 days or something uh we need to uh, change the dressing and put on the new dressing and so i didn't face any complications after the reversal but the only thing is like about the stoma site we need to take extra care of that while taking bath and all so just after surgery like i would also like to ask is how was your movement means when you were sleeping when you were walking or when you were bathing was it difficult to maintain the stoma since it was very new and fresh okay uh, after ileostomy right yes, yeah yes yes ileostomy uh, the nurses uh, in cmc they train me how to take care of that while taking bath we need to cover that as it is like very fresh for the few days and initially i uh, found it difficult to empty it out and uh, to change uh, the bag and all that and uh, i didn't go out for a few days because i always had the feeling suppose if it leaks then definitely it would be embarrassing i didn't go out but after that uh, i uh, i didn't feel uh, like i have a stoma i did all the normal activities and even i traveled in train only for my reversal i traveled all the way all the way from coimbatore to vellore in train so initial days we need to take care of the stoma uh, very well we need to cover it with a plastic or while taking bath and all that and uh, after that and we have to focus on the food also because some food uh, there might be more uh, leakage so we need to focus on the food other than that uh, nothing once we know how to put the stoma bag and all that it's not a big challenge so you are comfortable now right with your stoma yeah reversal was done and after that it's normal and uh, after reversal i thought like everything uh, will be fine but again i had a surprise surgery in november uh, 2012 uh it was a diwali eve and i was all set i was in chennai only i came from coimbatore and uh, i was in chennai and uh, it was a diwali eve and i was preparing some sweets or something i was completely normal by the time and uh, i started uh, getting severe uh, stomach pain and i was throwing up and uh, it was all bilious in nature and uh, immediately i was uh, admitted in cmc uh, in november 2012 and uh, they took an x ray and identified that i have some uh, additions and uh, yes, yes. Uh, so again we managed conservatively for 72 hours uh, but uh, there was no improvement i was throwing up uh, bile so uh, again one more open uh, abdominal surgery just to release the additions I think it is called adhesiolysis or something like that so again one so that was an unexpected surgery uh, ileostomy okay reversal i was expecting it to happen but this was uh, a least expected one and after this again i was a bit scared because uh, the doctor said that uh, more we open the abdomen uh, the chances of additions are uh, more so i was uh, scared maybe i will have more such surgeries in the future but after a while i stopped it i thought okay if it comes let me face let's not worry about additions or anything for that matter so if once so we should continue fighting in uh, 2012 it was uh, mostly i spent my time mostly in the hospital and with three abdominal surgeries in a span of 5 months from june to november i had uh, three open abdominal surgeries it was uh, Uh, draining physically and uh, mentally, but uh, at the end I was able to have a normal life. 
how hard was it for you to maintain all the roles of a woman being a mother a wife a daughter please <laughs> see when we are terribly sick uh, for our needs itself we are dependent on someone right so uh, it was uh, almost impossible because my family only supported me after my surgeries i was able to perform all the roles but when i was terribly sick and my family uh, supported me my parents took care of my daughter and uh, they filled the void they did whatever they can do from there uh, to fill the void so that she doesn't miss uh, me and my husband also uh, was with me most of the time so she was missing both father and mother very badly but my parents uh to call the efforts to fill the void and uh, my husband was with me he was seeing my day to day struggle and all that so uh, he uh, he was my strength so uh, maybe those days i was not able to perform the role of a wife better but uh, yeah uh, but after the surgery things improved and uh, i am doing all all my duties now your relationship with your spouse never changed right in no, this yes, never changed like uh, he was my strength he was with me all the time in all my struggle i could say the relationship only strengthened with your mother in law with your parents and even also with yeah, your husband because especially support system is needed during the hard times right and i am very happy that my uh, husband my mother in law and my uh, parents were there to support me and uh, how did th- this disease impacted your professional life uh, there was a huge impact as i mentioned uh, my 12 years of career i have to give up for crohn's and after that 2012 it was full of surgeries i couldn't even think of uh, rejoining uh, 2013 uh, also i was experimenting with food and all that what suits me what doesn't what kind of lifestyle changes i can make uh, so i was fully involved in that and whenever i get time uh, i started reading my technical stuff i was an it professional so i was reading because i didn't have any specific hobby as such so all yes. i knew before was to work i completed my graduation and immediately joined work so i couldn't even think of any hobby so what i did was uh, bring or uh, bringing all the books and i started uh, going through it whenever i got time and in 2014 i got a, a couple of uh, freelance training assignments i took up those and uh, in 2015 i started looking out for full time job there was a financial need also at home and i was also feeling bored because 12 years i continuously work and uh, i was kind of feeling bored and i thought okay and the disease was manageable so why can i should that is also my identity i was an it professional i want to regain my identity so i uh, tried i applied for full time and my daughter also went to school full time so i thought okay this is the ideal time for me to try and i tried and initially i was very open about my illness so i used to attend many interviews everywhere wherever i go i used to tell like i worked till 2012 and all these things happened and i couldn't work and now i am trying i am fit i am feeling fit now so i am trying but uh, believe me i didn't get any job when i was very open about my illness all i got was sympathy i didn't land in any job so one year almost it, it went like that only so people that folk didn't even focus on my achievements from 2000 to 2012 i worked in various projects and i climbed up the corporate ladder very quickly but but uh, those were like totally faded now all the focus was on the break and my illness so i didn't get a job and after that in 2016 i uh, did reveal my illness uh, to be honest i told like uh, i had to take a break post delivery because i had health issues i didn't get into the details uh, so after that i got a job i uh, resigned in 2012 as an assistant project manager 
uh, in one of the reputed company but with the same designation in 2016 also i got a job but it was a very small company uh, but i uh, initially i found it bad but after that i felt like okay all i need is a job to prove myself to regain my identity so i did not worry about uh, all these things i took up the job and uh, initially it was tough because uh, uh, it was very near to my place so i was able to manage but uh, i used to consume only safe foods in the office uh, i don't want to end up in a flare in the office i was very cautious and uh, the office or it was also very understanding whenever i had some issues i can take work from home so professional life uh, i didn't have much of an impact and uh, i uh, took up a certification also pmp uh, certification so that is considered as a very prestigious certification in it and uh, it is a gold standard in project management i took that and after that i got promotion i was the first person in my company to take up that certification and i got promoted to project manager and uh, it was uh, so the certification enabled me to reshape my career uh, i can't say that uh, there was no impact after calls but some with the certification i managed uh, to get into a place uh, with uh, persistent efforts that's what i could say this uh, cron's journey what changes in your perspective have made this like perspectives yeah there are lot of changes in my perspective uh, mainly because of the lessons learned in the hard way <laughs> so, so uh, uh, first and foremost what i understood was health is a biggest asset because uh, all these years uh, whether it was in my school or in my career uh, i i just want to give the best and to be the best i pushed myself very hard uh, without even realizing that i am uh, neglecting my health and it would backfire one day i was pushing myself too hard now i realize everything can wait my health is important so i started uh, listening to my body and whenever i feel like taking this i'll take and uh, uh, not much plan about the future just take life as it comes no planning because if we plan something something else is going to happen so yeah. no not much of uh, planning just go with the flow and uh, one uh, major change in me is like uh, earlier i was not saying no for anything whatever uh, comes my way i was uh, accommodating everything thing and uh, now that is the major change in me i know my limitations now what i can do what i cannot do so when i feel i cannot do something i'll say no even uh, when people think that it is a selfish act or i mean i know my limitations so i really am not bothered about others now their opinion or judgments uh, i am going with the flow so so and tell us about your blog and uh, why did you start decide to start that okay uh, it's been a while since i wanted to write a blog but uh, um, uh, somehow uh, it was uh, getting delayed and uh, one more thing i this is the first time i'm talking about my illness so i was in a cocoon i all the things and immediately i started my career time was one constraint another thing was i was not very open about my illness but uh, now uh, something strike me that i should be more open uh, and many people who would benefit from my blog because uh, i have done many mistakes at least they will not do those mistakes so that is the main thing uh, i'll be sharing my journey uh, the mistakes and uh, the lessons learned in the hard way and now and one one more thing is like i've seen many ibd blogs but not many uh, from india so i want to uh, do uh, something uh, mainly for the indian people so that's how i started it and 
heard uh, Nog's name is Indian Scrum's Diary. That's yeah. a very nice name you have chosen. Uh, as I mentioned, I want it to be uh, Indian because I've seen many other blogs and as I told you when I googled initially, I could find all the uh, continental food. I couldn't find any Indian foods also. So I wanted all that to be incorporated in my blog. So that's the reason I kept that name. And after your surgery, uh, how has your eye work life been since we always know that IT uh, people who work in IT they have a very stressful and time limiting jobs they have to meet the tasks they have to complete the projects so how did you manage to do that actually as I told like uh, I was managing a team of 25 members uh, so uh, that was also another change in perspective initially I was only client friendly before my crowns whatever client I commit to client, I'll be delivering it at any cost, whether slogging or uh, working frantically, whatever it takes, I will be delivering with the team. But now again, there is a change. Like uh, I have decided that this is my work schedule and this is my team's work schedule. Maybe if we commit to the client also, maybe one or two hours, but I will not work day and night for the project uh, and I'll not allow my team also to work. So that's the strategy. And if we face any practical problems, I am very open to the client that this is a major problem that we are facing. And uh, we are arriving at a solution. Instead of telling at the end, I will be telling in the beginning itself so that they are also on the same page. So I have made sure that uh, health is important. Everything else can be. So it is not like uh, slogging and doing all that is going to take us anywhere if we are facing something and if it is realistic let's be open to the client and then tell them that like, this is what it is and we we can buy in more times so i'm doing it now uh, sometimes it is stressful but uh, uh, nine hours of productivity if we show i think that is more than enough it is not, it is not about staying in the office for long hours or uh, anything like that, if we are productive for an eight to nine hours, um, we'll be able to complete. A bit of planning is required, that's all. Uh, what is your, uh, not exactly I should say diet, but what is your food uh, menu and sleep hours that you do right now to maintain your uh, ideas to me? Yeah, uh, I can tolerate much of the foods now, but uh, even now I have certain restrictions. Uh, main thing is I've stopped consuming all the packaged foods, processed foods and all that. Since I am cooking um, right from the idli batter to all the masala powders that gets into my cooking, I make sure everything is homemade. And uh, uh, what else? And uh, How has your sleep been? Now, as you said before, your... Uh you were not able to sleep sometimes due to pain and all. Have that improved? That uh, sleep, I am getting uh, normal sleep only. There is no uh, problem in that. Sleep is normal. Uh, food also, it is normal, but I have uh, certain restrictions. And like now, as we have discussed a lot, we know, right, that many people have no support system in India still because this disease is there. Many doctors are very scared even to take such patients. Like, uh, do you think that India is uh, equipped with this support in for schools or jobs or colleges? I think uh, we have a long way to go in this. Uh, we are not yet uh, ready. That's my answer. Uh, there can be a lot of improvements uh, that can be done. The main challenge I find in this disease is uh, getting the right treatment at the right time. And uh, uh, one more thing is like the uh, lack of awareness is still there. Uh, because for a fever or a diarrhea, no one would go and visit a gastro doctor, right? They will just... Uh, visit a general physician, as I did. And if that is not working out, again, we'll change the physician, but it will not strive to visit a gas to, to visit a specialist. So when we do that, over the course of time, our illness gets aggravated. 
so that is happening uh that happened with me also uh, so that our the main reason for all this is lack of awareness so uh, we should uh, spread the word to the general public and i think uh, groups like you are doing a tremendous job Thanks. spreading the awareness and the people also should come forward see i told you this is the first time i'm talking about the illness there are many people like me so everyone should contribute so that uh, at least people learn from our mistakes yes and uh, one more thing i wanted to tell is uh, there should be job opportunities i told you right when i told about my illness i didn't land up in any job so i feel uh, the many people give up their careers many people even give up their studies uh, mainly before the diagnosis and during the diagnosis and after that even when they are ready to take up a job the opportunities are very limited because no one is ready to take us so that situation should change because uh, uh, in addition to the basic needs we also need money for the treatment uh, because uh, many people are leaving the treatment because of lack of funds so at least uh, the employer should come forward and give us opportunities many equal opportunity employers they should not uh, uh, consider this as a reason they should look into the potential not the illness so that is my uh, only request it could be that we might not be able to perform as diligently as other people but we can even right. if when we are walking from home with a laptop is with the laptop you do an office it's also right like that is not very popular in india as in western yeah. country part in job we could also do we can take care of our health and at the same time work and that will boost our confidence also yeah that thing and uh, as you have interacted with many outsiders means apart from your family your family is quite supportive that's a really good thing but how was people's reaction when before when getting employed and after getting employed what how was the work environment in office uh we are talking about my uh, official friends or uh, yes office friends office people office now friends. that okay actually i told you right i didn't reveal about my illness fully in the office so but i have told to my many of my friends so after that actually it was it was an eye opener for many of my friends because uh, they also thought like okay mm-hmm. even we have neglected our health all these days so we should focus more on our health because that is the only thing that is going to stay all money fame any everything can go on in one day when your health is not okay so it was an eye opener for many of them and many people uh, not my official friends many people uh, have told uh, that uh, my career has come to my end you have worked uh, so far and uh, now uh, with this disease you are not going to work and all those negative comments also i have heard but uh, i think all these only with all these only i wanted to prove and regain my identity so i'm just thankful for them that's it so any final uh, op uh, points that you would like to highlight for people to be more aware people to be more uh, aware of themselves aware of the society how can we bring more positive changes in uh, the journey for crohn's and other immune diseases any Maybe points you like to- yes yeah focus on the health and avoid uh, this packaged food processed food and all that and uh, how much ever it is homemade it is all well uh, because it might be tasty uh, the outside food might be tasty but it's going to be harmful in one day so food is a main important thing and mostly in it professionals what they do is like they will not have food at proper time uh, they will say okay let me uh, finish this uh, task then i'll have food so some days there is no proper timing some days even lunch will be at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the evening so that should change everything else can wait this cannot wait so that should be the mentality and sleep is another major problem i think now 
with the lockdown that is a serious concern for most of the people so sleeping at the right time and getting up early that is not the normal case now people usually are going to bed past midnight and all that so these kind of changes uh, should happen uh, then only uh, uh, we can focus more on the health aspects thank you so much shalini for so much of information your journey it is really remarkable and as i said in the beginning you are truly a strong woman crowns or not i don't know but you are really strong from inside out and i hope you continue to inspire others like you have inspired us also my pleasure and thank you for the opportunity like we are It's very happy to have you. That's what we can say. And guys, please follow Shalini's blog, Indian Scrunch Diary, and please keep in mind whatever Shalini has said that health is very important. Neglecting your body is not a good task, and especially during this corona time. Also, have a nice day, and I hope you have a nice time in the Navratri and Durga Puja. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye, Shalini. Bye. -bye.